I have the three wise men with me. They are going to help me with my devotion today, but don't turn me off thinking this is about Christmas. This is not about Christmas. I have three wise men from my manger scene, but they're not in the manger scene, and you're going to see in a moment why that is very appropriate. Uh, today we're in Matthew chapter 2. Thank you for joining us for the New Testament challenge. Happy New Year. You're starting the year right by studying God's Word together with me. We're doing one chapter a day, Monday to Friday, and by the end of the year, we will have read the entire New Testament together. However, today we're tackling two chapters. I'm skipping Matthew chapter 1 altogether because I, I, I preached on that during Christmas. So today, uh, we begin in Matthew chapter 2, talking about these guys. Uh, in verse 1, it tells us that during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. Uh, uh, how many Magi were there? Uh, well, we always assume three. The song goes like that. We three kings from Orient are... Uh, there were three gifts given, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. People assume three, but the Bible doesn't say for sure. Uh, during the 6th century, uh, a, a legend gave names to the three, uh, Gaspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. But were there three or 30 or 60? We're not entirely sure. Uh, tradition also tells us that the Apostle Thomas uh, actually baptized these guys uh, in India, and they ended up becoming priests. We don't know that either, but we do know the wise men or the magi came from the east, and they're they're searching for Jesus. For well, they're searching for the king. Uh, that's what in verse two they ask, "Where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we've come to worship him." So we start by talking about the seekers. If I'm outlining it, I would, I would give you five points starting with the letter S. The seekers. Uh, next would be the star. We saw his star. What is the star? Uh, there have been many different things suggested. The Greek word is actually the word aster. Aster. It, it could refer to a comet or a star or a planet or a supernova. It could have been any of those things. Uh, we know in, uh, uh, in the year 6 BC that Jupiter and Mars and Saturn, all three planets, came together. I've had people at NASA run it through their computers and confirm the same thing to me. Now, uh, if this was uh, an alignment of planets, Jupiter was known as the king's planet. Saturn was known as the defender of Palestine. So the Magi could have concluded that a king would be born in Palestine. Uh, however, there was also a tailless comet uh, for 70 days visible in the sky in the year 5 BC. It could have been a supernova. It could have just been supernatural something that God did. But I, I share that with you because you don't have to check your brain at the door to be a Christian. Science and the Bible are not at odds with one another. So we have the seeker, the star. Uh, next we have what I would call the stable or the lack thereof. Let me show you. Uh, King Herod is disturbed. We see that in verse three. And so he called the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and he asked them, okay, where is this Messiah supposed to be born? And they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. How did they know that? Uh, verse 6, they quote out of the Old Testament, Micah chapter 5, verse 2. The Old Testament said where the Messiah would be born. They knew it should be Bethlehem. And so the... Our friend the Magi uh, then go to, to Bethlehem. Now Herod says to the Magi, oh, please let me know when you find him so I can worship him as well. In the margin of my Bible, I, I wrote the word, you probably can't see it, I wrote the word liar. 
Herod has no intention of worshiping Jesus. So the star now reappears and it stops over the place where the child was. It does not say stable. What does it say? Verse 10 or verse 11, on coming to the house, Jesus is no longer in a stable. He's in a house. They saw the child. It doesn't say baby. The Greek word is child with his mother, Mary. The reason these guys are not in my manger scene is because they ought not be in anybody's nativity scene because they were not there at the stable. I'm not trying to mess up your nativity scene, but they were still en route when Jesus was in the stable. Uh, it wasn't until at least two years later that the wise men arrived. And at this point, Jesus is in a house. Uh, the next word I would write down is the word sacrifice. The seekers, the star, the stable. Number four, uh, the sacrifice. They, they bring to Jesus, it says, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These gifts are really fitting for Jesus. Uh, gold is a gift fitted, fit, uh, fitting for a king. Uh, perhaps that gold uh, helped support Mary and Joseph when they would have to flee to Egypt at the end of the chapter. But it just as well could have been formed into a crown to put on his head for Jesus is the king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. They gave a gift of frankincense. That's a gift uh, for a priest. Priests uh, actually used the sweet-smelling frankincense in the temple. Uh, and, and if you look at the word priest, the meaning of the word is bridge builder. And that's what Jesus was. Uh, he built a bridge as our high priest between sinful man and a holy God. And the third gift was the gift of myrrh. That's a gift given to someone who was born to die. Myrrh was used to embalm the bodies of the dead. Who brings embalming fluid as a gift to a baby shower? Well, that's a gift you give to someone who is born to die. The reason I'm calling point number four sacrifice is because this baby in the manger was born to be our sacrifice and to die on a cross for you and me. And, and finally, uh, uh, if I were to outline it, the last number five, the last S would be the word suffering. It's really quite sad what happens next. An angel of the Lord warns uh, Joseph in a dream, get up, Herod's going to try to kill you. And so they flee to Egypt. And when Herod, and then the angels warn the Magi not to go back to Herod. So when Herod realizes he's been fooled, he is furious, verse 16. He gives orders to kill every boy in Bethlehem, two years old and younger. Wow. So how old was Jesus? Probably around two years old when the, when the wise men came to him. One day, Jesus would die for the sins of the world, but on this day, two-year-old little baby boys in Bethlehem were dying for him. And then verse 17 says, this is uh, to fulfill what the prophet Jeremiah said. And then he quotes to us in verse 18 uh, what Jeremiah said. Uh, as we begin the year, uh, you no doubt are going to be searching for God's will, as all of us do. I doubt God's going to put a star in the sky to guide you. But can I tell you what will guide you? The Holy Word of God. The Bible says this is a light unto our feet. It is a lamp that guides our way. How did the wise men ultimately find Jesus in Bethlehem? It was the scripture. Micah 5 verse 2 told them where. And as we go through Matthew's gospel to start the year, you're going to discover Matthew, who wrote this to the Jewish people, repeatedly refers to the Old Testament scripture and says this was in fulfillment of what was written. If you want guidance in your life, you're doing the right thing. Start every day with the word of God. And we'll do one chapter a day. Come back tomorrow and we'll check out Matthew chapter three. Have a happy new year.